Well, that was fast. We are recording. We are Woo. recording. Hello, hello. Okay. Matt, turn your gain down. Yep. <laughs> Or should I say Arthur? Hello. Hey, that's better. That's, that's an actual right. signal. Yeah, it was a lot yeah. better. Okay. Cool. So you guys know how this goes. On the count of three, we clap. One, two, three. That was terrible. God, we're gonna have to get good at this. <laughs> that was okay. So I kind of just threw you into it. So we'll do it. Yeah, again. you just started singing it, bro. Yeah. yeah. We'll do it again on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. That was better. That was much better. <laughs> you guys weren't expecting me to sing into it. That was the problem. Well, no, I was expecting yeah. like when you did one, two, you said on three. So I was like, one, two. <laughs> <Fuck. laughs> so Can you turn your gain down? I feel like I see yours almost spiking a lot. Bitch, you need my gain down more? Well, look at your thing. How's that? I don't know. Look at the stream. Uh, you specifically told me not to look at the stream. Actually, it looks great right now. Yeah, it does. Yeah, um, better. Thank can you. you can you guys still hear me good enough, though? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It just wasn't yeah. peaking. Yeah, typically if you're peaking at points like that, you could turn it down by like 30% and it'll still be good. Excellent. Okay. So we are going to do a couple seconds of silence, and we will get into this. Matt, what are you doing? Nothing. Oh, I just see a whole bunch of little little spikes on yours from whatever the fuck. I moved my water bottle for a second, and now I'm late. All right. We'll do a couple seconds of silence, and I will get into um, the intro here. Uh, do you guys have any questions before we start? God damn it. <laughs> yeah, since this is session zero, I still don't 100% have my voice down, so it might change from this to one. That's fine. We can. Same here. It, you guys can talk about that when uh, when you introduce your characters as well. Whoa. -ho -ho. This is going to be more of a not as formal episode. We're just going to be, like I said, introducing the world, introducing the characters, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I said it's a shorter session. No worries. Yeah. Yep, it's going to be a shorter session. Uh, Melanie, real quick before we start, could I please get your character's name again? Samantha Williams. Samantha Williams. Okay. Um... I also have not decided if I know originally I told you guys 2010. I don't know if I'm going to put a year on it. Okay. Might do this so that way it can just kind of exist whenever. I haven't made a decision on that yet. But anyway, that was just another thought that I had. If you guys are ready, we will... Begin. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Pretend, episode zero for our first campaign. Before we get into what this game is going to be, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our players. My name is Jordan. I am your keeper for this game. And over there we have Nick. Hi, I'm Nick. I will be playing Ned. Also known as Nigel. Over there we have Breck. Hi, I am Breck, and I also will be playing Ryan. Right. And we have Matt. Howdy. I'll be playing Arthur. 
And we have Melanie. Hello, I will be playing Samantha. All right, guys. And my chair just squeaked. That was just a simple shift. Great start. Of course it did. (laughs) This game is going to be very loosely played in the Delta Green scenario. Now, when I had uh, you guys build your characters, um, I had you pick different professions based off of Delta Green, and then we moved some stats around for wherever they made sense. Uh, Before we actually start session one next week, if you have any other questions with that or anything else you want to talk about, we can go into that. Um, Our... The reason that we're moving stats around is because our campaign is going to take place with our four characters as high schoolers. So we'll take uh, Breck's character, Ryan, for instance. He had a 50 in heavy weapons. Was it Breck? Yes. Heavy weapons. We also move demolitions because explosives are not something you see with a you know, sixteen-year-old. Exactly. Well, I mean, certain sixteen-year-olds probably. But. <laughs> <laughs> that depends on how much you're out in the woods using M80s, right? Something like that. <laughs> and even that would be a, a stretch to call that a demolition. <laughs> <laughs> so our campaign is going to take place in the fictional town of Gainesboro, Ohio. We're doing the Midwest. I chose Ohio because it's close enough to home, but it's not home. You know what I mean? Okay, but we live in the Midwest. Stuff happens in Ohio. Yeah. We live in the Midwest. What if I wanted to like do Florida or something? Because that's where all the crazy shit happens. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, this is not going to be a Florida man campaign. Dang, oh man, I want gators. (laughs) No fun. And I promise you, we're going to get Melanie's audio figured out before the next episode. We, uh, we had yeah, an issue where her, <laughs> we had an issue where her computer decided to update and literally delete everything. So gotta love Apple. Yep, Gotta love that Mac. Um, I do also want to throw the warning out here. I know we're early into epi- into session zero here. I also want to throw out the warning to listeners that, This is, as you can tell from the tag on the episode, this is going to be an explicit podcast. Let's be real. When we were in high school, we didn't give a fuck what we were saying. And as these four are playing high schoolers, I don't expect them to give a fuck what they're saying. And that's just how it's going to be. Is it too late? Why? I was a good fucking child. How dare you? (laughs) Is it too late to turn into a Catholic kid? I I mean, you do you. (laughs) I don't know how the rest of the party's going to uh, going to act by you, but yeah, sure. So it is your backstory. It you. So like I said, you guys are attending Gainsborough High School. I know, really, uh, really original on the name, but you are a town that only has one high school, so they went easy on it. So and you said you, this is a, <clears throat> a made-up town in Ohio. Did yes. you actually look this up to find out if Gainesburg, Ohio is not real or not? Yes, I did. I Googled Gainesboro, Ohio, and nothing came up. Right. So the power of Google told me that I was okay. Your mascot for the school is the Lightning Hawks. Oh, hell yeah. Go Lightning Hawks! Does anybody, anybody get the reference? No. Yes. No. Nick, would you like to... Uh... Nope. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Just in case I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. <laughs> now I'm curious what you think the reference is. Please, Nick, en- enlighten us. Nope, that's for another episode. That's for the Patreon <laughs> later. Yeah. 60 episodes in, we'll get it figured out. <laughs> so I uh, I let our, our players here name a couple NPCs. <laughs> Excuse I... me, you did what? Yeah, you weren't in the other session. Oh, fuck you. I want to name an NPC. Don't worry. This has to do with our backstories. Oh, my God. I fucking... I remember now. (laughs) I'm looking at a character sheet. I love that character's name. 
So you have plenty of time to name NPCs before session one. A favorite uh, teacher. We have the art director, which is Mr. Vincent Link. We have our principal, who is Principal Shattuck. And now I'm thinking that maybe Matt was the only one that named one because oh, I, think yeah. I came up with oh, two names. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This next one is definitely me. Matt, would you like to give the journalism teacher's name? Oh, yeah. The journalism teacher is Miss Smithington Lee. <laughs> really rolls off the tongue. <laughs> fucking car crash. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, rolls off the tongue. Not like anything that rolls, but yeah, rolls off the tongue for it sure. Rolls like a triangle tire, yeah. <laughs> so at this point, that is basically all you need to know about our world for now this world is going to grow along with our characters so things that you do things that you interact with people you interact with is going to shape the world now before session one i am hoping to have a rough draft of our map to you guys so that way you guys kind of have a layout of the town so you know like if I say we're going over by the movie theater, you're going to know that the movie theater is on the opposite side of town from the school or yeah. that sort of thing. I am also going to say that we are running a closed game. And what a closed game means is say I have you guys roll a check to see something, but only Breck and Melanie see it. At that point, Nick and Matt. I will ask you guys to take off your headphones and I will let you know when it is safe to come back because that will be a way where it's going to kind of entice more role play. If the people who saw the things want to keep it from you, they can. If they want to tell you about it, it will open it up to their interpretation of what I told them to tell you. It, it's going to lead more to, to more of a story it's going to help flush out the story more. I understand. So it's also going to test how much we write down notes. Oh, dude, I literally just, while he was talking, grabbed a freaking notebook. <laughs> and I'm like writing Delta Green. So I'm going to have to get those uh, NPC names real quick after you're done. Yeah, I'll, I'll give them to you after we're done recording. Uh, full disclosure, Nick is going to edit a majority of these unless there is a breakaway where he is not a part of it. And then we have a third party that said he'd be willing to do it. So uh, we'll see how Nick and I are feeling when the editing of this comes out. This all might stay in. Groovy. Because it's fun. Hell yeah. <laughs> Three, two, one. Unpause. Unpause. I left a little bit of break in there for you in case you wanted to, you know, in case you didn't want to come out. Anyway. Okay, but talking through the break is not breaking. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right. This is a sign. So, yeah, so this is going to be a closed game. Um, like I just told you guys. Uh, so... If that is to happen, just be sure to keep your phones by you. I will shoot a text to the group yeah. or to the Discord or something and tell you it's safe to come back. Since we are recording remotely, um, that's just I can't actually have you physically leave the room. And if I have you guys leave this room that we are currently recording in, then we have to stop and then start again. And it's just an editing nightmare. So I will just have you guys take your headsets off, mute yourselves and then I'll let you know when you're safe to come back. Works for me. It's good. Yeah. That being said, I want to pass the torch to... Let's see. I don't have a D4 in front of me, so I can't uh, randomly roll you guys. No. Or I could pull that up on Google. You could. <laughs> you could pull it up on Google. Roll a D4. I got a three. Excellent. Matt, would you like to introduce your character? Fuck, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to go first this time. I didn't, I didn't either. And I was like, I really hope it's not me. I don't oh, think any of us but... Oh, well, uh... 
my name's Arthur, and my voice might change depending on how much I like it. Oh, I sure the hell hope it changes. <laughs> <laughs> this is already better than the voice that he had last time. By a mile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my name is Arthur R. Gooseberg. I'm a little redhead boy in journalism. Oh, God. Aria, will you be quiet? <laughs> even, even your cat is like, yo, Dad, that's the voice you're going with? <laughs> no, this is an experiment. This is a session. You have no idea how much I've been just experimenting with different voices. And when you said it was me, I was like, fuck. <laughs> I'm going to go with whatever comes to my head. So maybe it's this. Who knows? Jesus. I it won't be that. You. Anybody who <laughs> will not be that. Remember how we started this and I said I, uh, I know. keep the right to veto? Yeah, that voice is being vetoed. But why? <laughs> or you know what you sound like? You sound like but, the gingerbread man from Shrek. Yeah, it was kind of a mixture of that <laughs> and, the, and the, oh my god, the puppet. Pinocchio. Pinocchio. I'm sorry. Okay. My character is Arthur. Uh, Arthur R. Gooseberg. I uh, have a, my profession, or I guess, well, since we're in high school, we're like my employer is the high school student. So uh, I major in journalism and also like to draw cool comic books, especially Lightning Hawk. It's. I, I made a comic about our school because I'm a cool kid. Okay. And uh, what age are you and what year in high school are you? I am 17 years old. I am. That would be a junior in high school. I was like, it's oh my either gosh. a junior or senior. It's been like 10 years. I, I, I'm a junior in high school. Okay. I hear one of you taking notes. Oh, that might be me. I apologize. No, you're or good. It might be me. I just hear someone furiously tapping away on the keyboard like, this. I need to get all this down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm, my mic's kind of close to the keyboard, so you I'm going to keep that limited. Good. One of us, Breck. <laughs> you are good, my dude. Is there that's anything sorry. else about Arthur you want to say? Do you want to... Sorry, I don't know really what else to talk about. Do you want to give any of your bonds? Do you want to give any of your background? Yeah, well, I'm a pasty redheaded stepchild essentially so think of that i'm a ginger so please be kind have you counted how many freckles you have on your face yet that's demeaning that's a good voice this this is a good voice uh, yeah he said, <laughs> he said it's demeaning but he didn't say no <laughs> oh, i was no. waiting for I'm a trying, number i'm still trying to find the voice uh, sorry, I'm I'm very much scattered. We're in my I have I have bonds for my brother my brother Carl. My bond is also one of our fellow classmates who's also in the nerd variety. I'll let him introduce himself later. Real quick, um, brother Carl, older, younger? Oh, he's my older brother, Carl. Okay, is he also in school or? Is he out of school? You know what? He's out of school. Okay. Uh, I also have one of my motivations is my dog, Frankie. <laughs> okay. He's a, li- he's a little wiener dog. Love it. That's a great name for a wiener dog. <laughs> I also... <laughs> I expose the Illuminati. Uh, that's my real reason why I wanted to join journalism. I need to find out the truth. Conspiracy theorist. I got 50 into a cult. <laughs> that's, that's great. Sorry, I am also being quiet because I am also taking notes. <laughs> did the tapping go away because I quit furiously typing? Yeah, it did. At least for, uh, as far as I, I've heard. There, the tapping yeah, has that there was, that was me. <laughs> the, sorry, the tapping has returned. That was me. <laughs> uh, so I guess that's really 
that's really it, man. Arthur's just an everyman. I just, you know, everyone is Arthur's friend. He's the coolest kid in school. Arthur, when you built your character, I told you to come up with two fears. What were the fears you came up with? Oh, God. So his two fears are clowns and drowning. Okay, perfect. If you have nothing else, I will let you introduce the next character. Uh, do, I, do you want me to roll a d4? I rolled a d4. Well, I had Nick roll a d4 for me just to start. <laughs> Uh, if you want to roll a D4, you can. Otherwise, if you want to uh, 100% pick on someone, you can do that too. Nick, can you roll me a D4? A D4 or a D3 since there's only three left? Uh, just do a D4, and if it's a four, you re-roll it. It's a one. All right, then it's you. Oh, <laughs> bless your heart. That wasn't intentional at all. Uh, hi. My name is... Uh, Nigel Eggman Dollarin, uh, just just call me Ned. Uh, I go to Gainsborough High School. Uh, I'm I'm 16 years old. I'm a sophomore. Uh, I want to be in the media one day. Uh, of course, after I get done with the military, my dad he really wants me to go into the military like he was. So, okay. Um, uh, I do lacrosse in school. Again, my dad likes it when I play all the the sports but I, I really enjoy being in theater um I'm almost six foot tall but I, I like to wear some baggier clothes it keeps me comfortable um i i, I got a brown eyes brown hair i i respect my parents very much nathan and janice dollar and they're they're very respectable parents they do a great job uh I don't know. I, I have a lot of love for my dog, Banjo. He's, we got him for my dad, and, well, he's really taken a liking to me, and I like him a lot, too. So just, I carry his leash around with me everywhere I go just because you never know when I want to take him for a walk. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that, that's a little bit about me. Okay. Again, I told you two fears. Could you give me those fears, please? Uh he has a fear of failure and he has a fear of losing his cool. He's got a little bit of an anger problem. I don't like clowns. So kind of like losing control. Okay. I like it. Like it, like it, like it. All right. There are two more people to pick on. Well, there's a, there's another friend of ours, or at least he's, he's friends with another friend of ours. Um, Ryan, you want to, you want to come up and do your turn next? <clears throat> yeah, I think I can uh, do that. I, I am Ryan Poole Winchester. Um, uh, my profession is special operator, but since I'm a high school student, it's a little less, uh, special operator, more around just all rounder, not a jock exactly. Still do nerdy shit, but not as much as you'd think. Um, yeah, there's not too much to say. Just kind of does everything, knows a little bit about everyone, you know, hangs out with everyone occasionally. Um, was on the lacrosse team with uh, Ned for a little while, but didn't really like it. Kind of kind of hit my rebellious streak. <laughs> um, yeah, that's about, about all I want to say at the moment. Anything I missed? Uh, you said you were 16 when we talked earlier. Does that, that would put you at either sophomore or junior? Uh, I was going to go with Junior. You were going to go with Junior. Yes, because I lived that in real life, so figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair. It's not uh, fair, your method acting. <laughs> and then like, I, uh, like I've asked everybody else so far, two fears. Uh, fears are being alone and burning alive. Ooh, we got a yin yang here, drowning and burning alive thing. It uh, it's even funnier when you ask Melanie what uh, what her character does at school. Samantha, would you like to introduce yourself? So my name is Samantha Williams. I am a senior at the high school we're at, which I already forgot the name of. That'd be Gainsborough High School. Yep, Gainsborough. Um, <clears throat> Gainsboro. <laughs> That's what I said. Mm -hmm. Oh my! Um, 
I can I'm tell you're a blonde. <laughs> no, I'm not a blonde. I'm just tired because <laughs> I'm an athlete. I'm in swim and I am in softball and I like to ride horses on my days off. So like, I've got a lot going on. I'm tired. Okay. Um, I'm 18 years old. I have strong bonds with my mom, my best friend, Ashley, and my horse, Anubis. And my fears are the dark and spiders. Dude, this is going to be a, a crazy campaign. Just all the things you just gave us. Or we gave <laughs> them, I mean. Oh, I've been taking notes. I have not that can tell. And I have a wonderful brother-in-law that gave me this awesome notebook for Christmas. Oh, you're welcome. So, uh... As of right the second, I am putting the notes in my phone because I forgot it upstairs, but it will be in that notebook after today. <laughs> you better use that dice crossbow thing at some point. Oh my god, that'd be fantastic. I don't think you understand how powerful that crossbow is. It literally shoots it across the room. It's well, a it's goddamn like, weapon. You have to shoot it at like a wall or something. You can't just, you know. Functional. Yeah. <laughs> it, the the video I show I saw when I bought it so, showed it against like a wall. <laughs> so that is going to be our campaign. You have our setting, you have our characters, but I'm gonna throw a little bit of a curveball at you guys. I want you to go to your character sheets and under applicable skill sets, on the last. Six of them are blank. The very last box I want you to not the not where you actually put your um, number, but the blank box that you could put in a skill. Yeah. I want you to type a simple four letter word called luck. Wait, where are we writing this? Very bottom, very bottom of your skills. I want you to write luck. So you guys all put luck. Now, I think we can agree as all being, you know, right around our 30s, some of us a little bit younger than the others, not pointing Hi. fingers, that there are people in this world that would be luckier than others. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a D100, and I want you to do this right now live. And I want you to roll it three times. And whatever your highest number that you get is what your luck will start at. What if I don't have a D100 in front of me? Google. I mean, you could use Google, yeah. That would be fine. Okay, that's in first. I know this makes for great airtime, but I really wanted to throw the players for a loop here. Because Thank God this isn't the first episode. <laughs> Because we have not discussed luck yet. So they had no idea this was coming. I just rolled two 97s oh, back to back. Fuck you. I just got a 95. All right. Looks like we got a couple very lucky individuals. I, got, um, I dropped the dice. We could hear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how lucky I am. I got to use this one. Oof. 86. <clears throat> what if we got a 98? Then we have some very lucky individuals. I got 87. 87 is your highest? Yep. Melanie got 98 is her highest. I got 95 is my highest. 95. And Brick, what did you get as your highest? 97. 97. Twice. What Sweet. the hell? This is oh. not boding well for the rest of the campaign. <laughs> that no. just means I get to really have some fun here. Okay. So luck is going to play an integral part in this campaign. Luck can be used for many different things. You can sacrifice 10 luck at a time to avoid damage or to avoid major damage. So basically what that means is you can use up 10 luck roll a d6 and whatever that d6 is negates off of the attack so if you get hit for five and you roll four you're only taking one damage okay, okay. if you die 
If your hit points reach zero, you can expend 30 luck to avoid death. What you say? And however that happens, I will dictate in the moment if that's what you decide to do. Do we lose the luck once we use it? Yes. Okay, so like you would deduct 30 points from what you have. Yes. Does the luck come back or is it gone forever? I haven't decided, but I like the idea of not telling you how, but giving you opportunities to get luck back. Interesting. And it will be a, excuse me, it will be an at my discretion kind of thing. Like uh, we've all played D&D. Think of it as when the DM decides, you know what? You deserve an inspiration point. That's going to be kind of like how I'm going to run luck. It's going to be, you did something good. Here's five luck. I like it. So that's how so lucky. That is how luck is going to run. Are we going to be able to use luck to increase a role to actually not be a failure? Or is it just the two that you said? Yes, that was the other thing I was going to bring up. So (laughs) say you have a... I told you guys you can't go over 60 in any of your stats. So say say you have a 40 in something and you roll a 55. You can expend 15 luck to make that a success. Using that much luck on one singular roll, I wouldn't do unless it's an important roll personally. But hey, it's your character. You do what you want. You get over there, Matt? I moved my dice. Is it that loud? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, it like you fell yeah, over. You just, yeah. Oh, Sound wow. like you just dove out of your chair. <laughs> oh damn! <laughs> uh, but yes, um, you can indeed expend luck in order to make a um, a failure success. Speaking Excellent. of successes and failures, like I said, we we're playing a modified Delta Green, so crits are going to work a little bit differently in this. Um, than like what you would be used to if you play Call of Cthulhu or anything like that. So in like Call of Cthulhu, you have your success, great success or ultra success or whatever they call them. Like you have three steps. You don't have that in Delta Green. You have success, failure or crits. Crits are going to be one or 100, two or 98 or 99. So if it's the first two or last two numbers, it's either going to be a crit success or a crit failure. But also, if your dice match, it will be a success uh, crit. So, say like, you have, double? well, say like you have a 50. 55. Right. Say you have a 50 in your stat and you roll a 44. Even though that is only six points away from being a failure. Since the dice match and it's a 4-4, that would be a crit success. Okay. Does that make sense? So no, like but I'll figure matching, it out later. Any matching numbers <laughs> will be a crit success? Any, yeah. So 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66, 77, 88, 99 are all going to be crits. Whether that's over or under, what you're rolling will depend on if it's a crit success or a crit failure. Oh, God. Okay that that's interesting see how that uh helps <laughs> or hurts. Or hurts yeah because uh you could have a 65 in a stat after like we play for a little bit and bump it up and roll a 66 and crit fail by only missing the mark by one but that also leads back to what breck asked a little bit ago you could also expend a luck and make that a success right that's okay. I have a lot of luck. And you said it's 15 luck to turn something from a fail to a success. I used 15 just as a as an example. It's going to cost whatever the difference is. Oh, ooh, I like that better. Ooh. Yeah. So if you if you have a 50 in a stat and you roll an 80, that's going to cost you 30 luck to make that one a success. I like Got that. It. Yeah. Got it. So just so, like D and D, I'm all sorts of confused, and I'll just figure it out as I go along. <laughs> well, I mean, Jordan can explain it more off air. Yeah, I can totally that, explain it more. That's not going to help me. People have explained D and D to me, and I'm like, yeah, it totally. Draw I get pictures. It. Yeah, and just make I'm a little just, cheat sheet. 
Yeah. I, I just figure it up as I go. So that's just how it's going to be. Okay. And I will be happy to tell you if you're doing it wrong. Great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i think that is all i have for this episode do you guys have anything else that you would like to uh, add or what do you think yeah i do want to say one thing uh i i didn't really know how too much how to uh introduce my character too well uh i'll just say my character definitely is that weird kid in in school, the the one that was drunk and drawn all the time, one that the teacher so had to tell, okay, put kid. the notebook away. You know that kid. Oh, he's not that quiet. But I'm just saying, like, uh, I I didn't. I don't think I explained my character that well. That was the burden of being the first person. Show. <laughs> Whose day was it to bring this guy a Snickers? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the candy. <laughs> they don't know that the whole world is run by seven people. Seven people. Uh, good good callback to a Dean Cook joke. I enjoy that. That was good. <laughs> Going back to characters like Matt said, um, I'd like to point out that Samantha, while she is an athlete, is also a secret artist in her free time as well. That people don't oh, really know if I, she can draw. I, I guess I also forgot to, to mention... You all have one mutual friend. This is a, a somewhat of a small town bordering a, a bigger city. But you guys kind of live in a town where everybody knows everybody. So, um, God, I know shit, buddy. I'm not going to continue. <laughs> I don't want to get copyrighted. I, I know. I, I, it took everything I had to not continue on that with you. The, uh, the character that is a friend to all of you is also 18 years old. She is also a senior. And her name is so. Her name is Ashley Brooks. That is the name of the of the character. And our story will begin in the next episode with with her telling you guys some sad news. Um, okay, but uh, like, are we all in a group when she tells us this, or is? Yes, you guys are all friends. So you guys all know each other, whether you are friends with each other. Or not. Or friendly. Yes. Whether you are friends with each other or not is up to you, but you are all individually friends with Uh, Ashley. I'm getting a lot of Snickers. (laughs) (laughs) And as Melanie said, Ashley is one of her bonds. She is Melanie's character, Samantha, and Ashley are best friends. So however you guys want to spin that you are friends with Ashley, you can figure that out. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But our story will begin with... A little bit of sad news coming from Ashley. I will not tell you the sad news. That will be for episode one. Thanks for the sad cliffhanger. Oh, you're so, (laughs) so welcome. But I think we should get used to it. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Cliffhangers are going to be a staple of this podcast. I'm not dead yet. Not yet. No. But that's okay. Because there's plenty of time to change that. (laughs) But anyway, that is going to do it for this episode. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, We will kick off into the story beginning in the next episode. We'll kick off into the podcast proper in the next episode. We just kind of want to give you guys a little bit of an introduction to us, our characters, the story. Thanks for playing pretend with us, everybody. We'll work on the outro. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.